And it is time we celebrate an enigmatic personality, Reverend Canon Goodluck Umusu at 50. The Reverend Canon Goodluck Onyekachi Umusu, born, bred, and schooled in Abia State, Nigeria. Like every normal child, he was born into a family, loved and taught in the ways of the truth. Ambition, or as many may say, the search for greener pastures led him out of his comfort zone and into a world of audacious and yet rewarding adventure. He was plunged. God in his gracious ways found him and into the vineyard of God's grace he was led. And since then, he has not turned either ways, neither left nor right. Known to be a man of great talent with many parts and loved by many that have come across him, he gradually attained great heights in the evangelical ministry. Being led to lead the ship, he is now decorated among the generals of God. Now attaining the new golden age of 50 and still standing firm in the world, there is now many more great reasons to celebrate this man of grace. There are many more things to be said about this great personality, but let's hear from he himself. My name is Reverend Kaiman Bumlok Mosi, um, the fifth child of the late Pa Israel and late Mrs. Lucas Mosi from Mumbai, ambassador to the government of Abia State, Nigeria. I had my primary education in Mumbai uh, Primary School. I had my secondary education in Mumbai Secondary School. And I had my tertiary education at Abia State University, Utunu. And that dropped off in the year 1997. After which I proceeded for my national youth service at Jigawa State of Nigeria. And after all of that, we had to come back. Uh, worked a little in the States and then came over to Lagos for greener pastures. We got that, but along the line, the divine had a different mission, a different purpose for us, and that is to be in the ministry. And here we are in the ministry. The journey, um, I believe, has been made a lot uh, easy because of God's involvement, especially in the definition of grace. I read Spongebob Science and Administration and I want to believe and I so believe that because of the grace of God in my life that occasioned the call, um, the trans transition from that background to uh, the ministry was smooth and quite easy. And I say this so much because there is the involvement of the hand of grace of God. So I believe I am so called to serve in the ministry. Way back and many years back, growing up, well, I've always had this knowledge, I've always had this conviction, expressing in um, uh, areas of service to God in the church. Um, growing up on the children's uh, ministry to the youth ministry and all the way to um, adulthood and all other evangelical arms of the church talking about the church now the Anglican church all of the evangelical engagements the Evangelical fellowship with the Anglican Communion in the area of prayer, in the area of ministration and delivery of the Word of God, in the area of preaching, teaching, and in the area of even deliverance. And so, doing all of these as a lay person in the church, I 
but let her to know that these were preparatory grounds which God has put in place to really now at the nick of time, at the right time, opened up the the call, my eyes to see that yes indeed I am needed in the ministry. So uh, briefly, in my own case, I believe I am so called. I don't want to talk about the revelations, uh, personal revelations and personal message and messages that came from people as touching my call in the ministry. But all I can say and truly so is that I am convinced that I am called to serve God in the Anglican uh, Church. And that's where we are. Um, but when purpose is not known and used, it's inevitable. He said, when do you know the purpose of God in as touching or concerning your life and you pursue it? There you have peace. There you have contentment. There you are satisfied. There you have rest. So it is not about the opinion of the world. Yes, yeah, there's money outside. There is um, affluence outside. But these things are very key in the making of a total person and uh, I believe I am a lot more interested in them than the formation of the opinion of the world as such in wealth, affluence and prosperity. The ministry, without um, you saying the fact, is challenging. It is time consuming. It takes a chunk from um, every life of a man or a woman who is in it. However, the foundation, the manual for anyone who is in the ministry remains the Bible. And the Bible going through it from Genesis to Revelation tells you about balance. So there's always the room for balance. Yes, it's challenging when you have to attend to conferences outside of your home and you are there in days. You have to attend to retreats. Um, you know, you are there for days. You have to also even engage in your own personal spiritual disciplines and which may take us to days. However, in all of these, um, scripture is very clear, the Bible is very clear about family life, about ministerial life, and social life. All, all of the you know, branches of life a man you know, will think of. And so, he will now come back to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. See, there is time for everything and it's easy for everything under heaven. And so, as tasking as it is, yes, at times there are demands needing you to be at home. Baby is sick or ill and you need to get the baby to the hospital. Uh, mommy is, uh, is pregnant and you need to take care of her. So these are, these are you know, challenges. However, there must always be a room, a way to marry both together. So there's time for ministry, there's also time to attend to uh, family life. There is no occupation, there is no vocation, there's no career, there's no profession that is without these old challenges or call them hazards. Even in ministry, there are challenges and there are also hazards. Times you want to go preach at a particular place and they say, we don't need you to preach here. And the minute to the letter. Time you are doing the morning cry and the group of persons come out and they say, we, you, are, you are disturbing us. And you know, things like that. I sincerely bless the name of the Lord that of all of the challenges that have come away in the course of, uh, of our ministry, 
uh, he has also richly supplied his grace for us to surmount those um, challenges. But I can tell you uh, specifically um, in 2017 when I was uh, transferred or yes, transferred from Anglican Church of the Nativity, Pangu Kui, to uh, Anglican Church of the Advent, uh, Matamaza Lagos. Um, where I had to face the task of completing a, a gigantic building, top building um, for the glory of God and the blessing of His people. It was, it was a huge, huge challenge because looking at the level of the building, um, there was just no way a small me at that time would actually lift a finger over a, a block in that place. But as huge as it was, as tasking as it was, I trusted the grace of God and uh, one here, one there, one by one, one by one, as God began to send uh, mission partners, ministry partners, uh, opening up uh, avenues for help and support, I saw that um, that building was completed at the time when it was just within a, a space of um, two years and few months we were able to complete that building so it's really the grace of god really has switched the fears we had at the early challenge of the building but apart from that um all others are things that accompany uh, issues and little bit of challenges that accompany uh, ministry, which one by one they are being treated and they are being handled. Um, basically, um, you know, we are also. Um, as touching priesthood now, we are also not too old. We are just about 12 years in the ministry, uh, priesthood ministry. And um, what I just pointed out you know, earlier uh, was actually the height of it. It was just like coming from the area of abundance to the area of scarcity. God uh, assisted, supported us, based uh, our work and we were able to uh, really stand out. These movements uh, from one place to the other, as tasking and as challenging as it has been, I will also say that it has been uh, decorated with grace. Because um, where we have, where we have served, or we have served, um, I served in the place where I am. Igbos, Yorubas, and other tribes, and then I was moved there to a place where it was predominantly um, hundreds or ninety nine percent Igbo congregation. And being an Igbo for me, it was uh, just uh, being at home. I was at home, so um, there it was fine. Uh, but as touching the physical movement, um, yes. It's just like a place you have, uh, you, you build a relationship, you have, you are good with the people, and then suddenly there's a break. You are moving away from that environment. So, uh, at the first impression, there is a shaking. But of course, moving up, you will also find that the it's the human being that you are going to meet the other divide. As to other things, family, children, and all of that, I want to say that in our own case. We'll be, we'll be so blessed. We'll be blessed. When we were in the activity, my kids were at the particular school where they were schooling because of uh, my location, the place where I lived to attend to services there. So my children were there. We were schooling around the place. So whenever we were moved to another place, the uh, location was also within where the uh, school of the children were. Now the third movement 
was also within almost within the same area where I had this. So I was watching the education of my kids, um, the movement didn't really affect them. Yeah, okay. And um, same with my wife and myself. So we we have been blessed with the several movements. In fact, I would say that it only uh, increased uh, level of relationships because you know people here, you know people there, and you just keep knowing people as you navigate. If you have an understanding of the Anglican ministry, you in the Anglican uh, palace, it is called preferment, and it is the exclusive preserve of the diocese bishop. He comes when he is led by the Holy Spirit. Whoever he prefers is just by his own discretion. My pursuit is usefulness, impact, relevance. Wherever I am to do ministry and wherever I am being sent. Because again, you can't send yourself, you can't post yourself, you can't transfer yourself. So wherever I am, that is my lookout. Usefulness, relevance, and impact. Other things. I believe in The Anglican Church um, is a communion. Beyond that, the Anglican Church is also Episcopal. It is Episcopally governed. The Church is being governed by bishops. And in relation to your question, I want to submit here that in 2010, when I was being, uh, when I officially came into the ordained ministry, it was under the uh, uh, Episcopal ministry of the most reverend doctor, um, Ephraim Adebola Ademogo. He made me deacon in, two, in July 2010 and also presented me in July 2011. Now, I want to say that for him, he is the tribalite. And so he is not, he is not given to um, favoritism, ethnic politics. So he looks out for um, the good in you. And getting it, he's okay with it. And being led by the Holy Spirit, he relates with you. So as at his Episcopal ministry, as long as it lasted, here in Lagos, it was good for me, it was beautiful. And um, he uh, also appreciated it. Now, moving from there to uh, the now bishop, and that bishop, the most reverend doctor, Humphrey Babishabi Olimakai, it is just like taking over the battle that he also um, has found love in us and in our ministry. So he's not dealing with us as foreigners. He's not dealing with us as strangers. He's dealing with us as brothers. And he's dealing with us as uh, fellow Christians and believers. Now, from that apex to um, the community of priests, it is just um, as given. There is no bickery. There is no ethnicity. Uh, service here have been, have been good, so there is no um, uh, favoritism and um, ethnic uh, bickerings and all. Everybody is accepted, whether you are Igbo or you are Bini or you are Shekiri, you are Yoruba, we will see ourselves as well. The ambience of um, the Christian folk, well, I believe that the um, highest uh, desire of every Christian, or every child of God, is to make it to uh, heavenly mansions. And if I would have ever done all of this, been to several towns, acted several lives, relevant all times and seasons, and then at the end of time, um, my work will be rejected. I think that should be the height of um, failure. And so for, for me, my utmost desire and goal is that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be a castaway. 
it's not about acquisition, it's not about wealth, it's not about affluence. For me, I'm a household. It is that after we would have done all, we will have that patting on the back from the Lord Jesus that says, well done, good and faithful servant. That is my desire. They say 50 is golden and uh, gold is a precious and durable metal. I want to sincerely wish for myself um, the fullness of God's grace, the fullness of His mercy, the fullness of His presence, whether actively in the ministry or after um, the ministry. I also wish for um, my colleagues and who will be colleagues and those that will be coming that none will uh, operate outside the radar coverage of God's mercy, of God's love, of God's grace. 50 is big. 50 is also a foundation. However, in all things, that we may be accepted before Him in whatever we do and in whatever we say. We also had a talk with a few others, and they too had this to say. He's a man of God, a man that knows how others go. He carries everybody who's along. He has a listening ear, and above all, he's a child of God. My vicar, Reverend Canon, good luck with the Kachimus. I have known him for quite a decade now. As at when um, I came into St. Peter's, he's part of this church. Though then, I think he was in a um, seminary, he was into seminary. And uh, I think. Um, I know him to be a very good disciplinarian. I know him as a servant of God. I know him as a man that has all that it takes to be a vicar. He's so God-fearing, he's so articulate, he's fabulous, he's fantastic. He's a man of his words, a man of many parts. And uh, under his uh, tutelage, I found him to be God fearing and um, an evangelist to the call. Uh, Reverend Graham Bullock was who I, I know him. I met him in this church some years back, 2002, 2003 or 2004. I met him in the church one day singing and the voice was melodious that I approached him. I said, Good forward in there. And I asked him to join the choir or band. I never knew that the person I'm asking to join choir or band is already a musician in here. By the time he joined the band, we were a kind of introducing him to the band. But you never knew that he's a computer or keyboard wizard. Who we are introducing plays more than professional. So he became a member of the band. From there, he joined AYF. From there, he became a member of the DCC. He was secretary of the AYF, secretary of the DCC, secretary of the school board. In fact, he was all over. He was versatile. Since then, he has been an instrument to the church. Before his arrival, he in St. Peter's alone. I could remember vividly how scanty the church was. But when he came, we normally have a full house to event. That's one. Another is the prayer life of every member of St. Peter's Ararum increased. We have a solid foundation home. He helped in organizing things that is not well done. If I'm giving him good to that, 
and may God strengthen him to do more. With all we have heard, knowing there are many more to come, we will go ahead to say a very happy 50th birthday to Reverend Canon Goodluck Umusu. May you see greater days and attain greater heights. This is Elvis Imos Ubiaju reporting for Starfaces TV. Thank <laughs> you.